Hi, welcome. I'm Mary Crowley and this is Arts and More. Today I have as my guest Heather Bouillard. Did I say it right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so good, right? Uh, who is director of Miss Lorraine School of Dance. Welcome. Thank I'm you. so glad you're here. Yeah. Um, the Nutcracker is going to be performed at the Paramount in December, right? It is, yes. Why don't you tell us what you'd like to share about the Nutcracker? Well, um, this is always one of my favorite productions every single year. Um, it's a community production, so although I am the director of the performance, um, we have dancers from many area dance schools, so it's always really fun to get to work with all the children from the area. Um, and, you know, my favorite thing, I grew up performing in the Nutcracker, um, so it's really fun to kind of share that, that history with the children. Um, Tchaikovsky was the composer of the music for the Nutcracker. Could you tell us a little about the story? Yes, absolutely. So um, the performance starts um, in the Stahlbaum's household. So Dr. and Mrs. Stahlbaum are having a Christmas Eve party, um, and their children, Clara and Fritz, are waiting for all of their guests to arrive. Um, and in comes Drosselmeyer, who is Clara's mysterious godfather. Um, and he brings with him the Nutcracker doll. Right, so. and here is uh, a Nutcracker, very <laughs> much like the one that you would see if you were going to the ballet. Yes, actually, this is the one we use it on the oh. stage at the Paramount. Oh, you do? So, yes, yes, <laughs> this is our prop. <laughs> so very this good. Is, this is the one. Um, so he brings with him the Nutcracker doll um, and gives it to his goddaughter, Clara. And um, Clara's brother, Fritz, soon after breaks the Nutcracker out of jealousy. Um, and the Nutcracker's fixed, and then Clara dreams um, that the Nutcracker comes to life and turns into a prince. Um, and the prince brings her into a land of the sweets, where all of the sweets from various lands perform. Um, and, you know, it really just has, the whole story has that magic of Christmas Eve. Yes, it <laughs> does. Um, the Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy. I watched that on YouTube. Uh, and it was very beautiful. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. Um, that's definitely one of my favorite um, dances, one of my favorite pieces to choreograph um, throughout the year. Um, we have a, a very talented young lady who plays our Sugar Plum Fairy. Um, and she loves to do partner work. She loves to do pas de deux. And this is her, her big chance every year to show off her partner that's skills great. and what she's learned. Um, costumes. Uh, you have to have a lot of costumes, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so we started to do this production um, three years ago. This is our third year. Um, we partnered with um, the Paramount to make it a community production. Um, so in that, we, we really kind of brainstormed around how to um, make the costumes available each year so that children wanting to perform in the performance um, didn't have to invest in those costumes. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, so um, we partnered with the Paramount. We did a lot of fundraising um, and ended up purchasing our whole storage of costumes. So um, I think we pulled out the costumes this weekend. I think we have 13 wardrobe boxes packed to the brim with costumes. Oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> um, it's definitely a daunting task to pull them all out every year, make sure they're, they're in performance quality and get them all cleaned and ready to go. Um, so many of our costumes were purchased, but some of them um, were not, we weren't able to find what we were looking for and the style we were looking for. Um, so I personally have, have made a lot of them, and um, we have some wonderful dance mothers and dance grandmothers That's great. Um, who have helped us as well. So, so it's a community. It's, a, it's an effort by many, many people, it not is. just those who are dancing. Oh, yes, definitely. Um, one, of, one of my favorite things about this performance, I believe I already said, was you know I grew up doing this, um, but many of our dance families did as well. So we all have a lot of really special memories doing that. So when we brought it back three years ago, um, it wasn't just the excitement of us and the dancers, but mothers, grandmothers, <laughs> great grandmothers. I mean, that's fantastic. Yes, yes. it's really, really unique and, and wonderful Rutland history. Right. Um, <clears throat> who does the choreography? Well, I myself do the choreography. Um, I do fall back on the classical variations. Um, and this is ballet. It is. It's all ballet. Yes, we do. We throw in a tiny little bit of acrobatics here and there. Um, okay. We have a couple, couple of pieces that um, are based in acrobatics because we have some really great acrobats who like to tumble and, and use their flexibility. Um, but 
you know, the basis of it really is in classical ballet, um, which is really neat because I think unique to many performances, you don't really get to see a lot of classical ballet in the area anymore. So. No, you don't. No, yeah. you're right. Yeah, so it's really fun to, to bring that back. And um, it really has, I've seen a re-energization of the children with the classical forms of ballet, which Good. I love. So. Yes. Yeah. That's a part of who you are. Yes, definitely <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, before we show the Nutcracker rehearsal and performance, little clips, um, why is dance important? My goodness. <laughs> there are so many different reasons. Um, you know, first and foremost, uh, dance is just such a unique form of, it's a combination of athleticism and, and artistic value that you can't really get from many activities. Um, it teaches children um, discipline. Mm -hmm. It teaches them um, stamina mm -hmm. and resilience. Right. Um, you know, and, and it's such a unique form of exercise where, you know, you get your brain moving as well. So it's not just, it's not just great for your body, it's great for your brain. Um, and really anybody can take part in it, you know, anybody from the youngest, you know, I, I started dancing when I could walk, but, and many people did as well. Um, but you know, our youngest little dancers are, are one and a half, two years old and we go all the way up to they the They are? Yes. One yeah. and a half to two? Yes. I think our youngest one just barely turned two. So, That's yeah. That's fun. Well, the Nutcracker at the Paramount. I am looking forward to it. Yes. Thank you. Me as well. <laughs>
So you've seen the Nutcracker. Now we're going to talk about other dances. Uh, and, and you could mention ballet, too. Um, what sorts of dances do you like teaching to children? Well, it's really hard for me to pick a favorite. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, this really dance in general is my passion, and I just I love to um, take what I've learned and what I know and and teach it. Um, we offer a lot of different styles of dance. Um, for the littlest guys, we kind of base it in ballet, which is really the cornerstone of all dance. Ballet, the technique of it, um, really. And you say things. little. How young are the little? children? Um, my littlest guys are two years old. So I have a class um, of two and three year olds. Um, and then we have our preschool class and our kindergarten class and they go up in age from there. Um, but my littlest... And this is all ballet you're talking about? Oh yes. Okay. Yeah. If we start ballet with them um, right at, at two years old. Um, That's astonishing. Yeah. <laughs> with really fun creative songs. It's definitely okay. not that classical. All right. You know, they're not quite disciplined as of right. two years old. Right. But um, it's really great to kind of teach them that basis. And do they have ballet shoes? They do. They do? Yeah, they make them that small. <laughs> they're quite cute. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so we start teaching ballet right at a very young age. Um, we also like to teach them, you know, um, tap dances, which is also a, a really great foundation. Um, so we teach tap as, as young as four years old. Um, and we start them you know, really learning all about the different sounds. And you have recitals? We or what do. do you call them? We do. Do you still call them recitals? Yes. Yes, so you do. We have our end of year recital in May okay. um, and our entire studio. And so you have days. ballet and tap and what else? We have acrobatics. Mm -hmm. Um, we teach lyrical. We teach. What does lyrical mean? I have no idea. I know. <laughs> so lyrical is a more modern form of dance. Right. Um, it's based um, on emotion. So it's a form of kind of communicating through your dance and communicating an, an emotion and a story through. Well, do you emotion. give your, your students an emotion, or do you say this? This is a feeling. So this is joy. Tell me, with your body what joy is. Yeah, so do we you, do, yeah, a yeah. little bit of both. Um, so that's actually one of the exercises that we use to kind of introduce them to what lyrical dancing is. Oh, okay. Um, and the little ones love that. That might be their favorite activity all week. Um, I'll give them, you know, an emotion or a feeling and, mm -hmm. and they get to dance around and show me what that means to them. So <laughs> they love that. Um, now, there's another dance, contemporary dance. What is contemporary dance? So contemporary dance is basically, um, it's, it's a, again, a more modern art form. Um, it's what you see on commercial television shows these days. Okay. So oftentimes when you're watching those shows on television, so you think you can dance and such, um, you're watching contemporary dancers. Okay. So it's a fusion of ballet, jazz, and modern dancing. Um, and it really, it incorporates a lot of tricks and a lot of skills, flexibility, um, so all those um, elements that, that look impressive to both the dancer and the non-dancer. Okay, and that's how they sell the dance television shows. <laughs> it's a big part of it, yes. It's a big part of it. Hip-hop. Hip-hop. So hip-hop is um, actually grew out of um, New, the New York City in the 1970s, so street dancing, um, and it's become a very mainstream art form. Um, you know, we teach a more commercial version of hip-hop, um, but if you go and you take classes, you know, in the city, um, you can take street dancing, you can take break dancing, you can take um, the okay. commercial hip hop. So it's all a different fusion, but fast moving, bouncy, lots of fun. Um, all the energetic children really love that one. <laughs> okay, that's right. Yeah. Yes, it's exercise. Yeah, it's a yes. great way to get moving. It is. Jazz, what do you include in jazz? So jazz, <laughs> again, a little bit faster moving, um, has some more technical skills. Um, you know, the turns and the leaps and the jumps, we teach them all about um, those different elements in jazz, um, usually set to more modern music, kind of the music you would hear on the radio. Um, so again, really exciting for some of the younger kids um, that like to get moving really quickly. Okay. Anything that, that we haven't mentioned, any dance form that you can think of? Um, let's see. No, I think that, I think we mentioned, we touched base a little okay. bit on everything that, that we offer. So if, if I were, a child or a teenager, I could probably find my place uh, in, in your roster. Oh, right? absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, we have a little bit of something for everybody, from the, the ones that like to be a little bit more graceful and proper to the ones that like to bounce move and move around. 
<laughs> okay, great. Well, we'll go on to see some clips of, of uh, children or teenagers doing different kinds of dance. Yes. That we've talked about. Yes. And here we go. Take our holes. Are you ready? We're going to use our heel tap and take our holes.
so much for watching. How lucky are they who dance?